It's a microphone. Do you want to say hello? Hello. What's your name? Violet. You can say thanks for listening to Hitmakers. I don't know. That would be super good. <laughs> that would be good. I mean, we could include it in the in our recording then. Can you say, okay, thank you for listening to Hitmakers. Yeah, we can't put it on the ground. And it's not yours. <laughs> it belongs to me now. Well, Whoa. we're going to go, I'm actually. I'm being here. Yeah. Your parents must be somewhere, right? Hello, 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 hello. Good morning, sunshine. It is not at all a bright, sunshiny day here in St. John, New Brunswick, Canada, where I currently reside, but you are listening to the one, the only show called Hitmakers, except there is another podcast called Hitmakers, but it's Health Information Technology, H-I-T. If you look it up, uh, Health Information Technology Makers, and they've capitalized the H-I-T. And when I was trying to decide whether to call this Learn Drums, the podcast, or something else... Um, that did occur to me as a, I was going to call it Shut Up and Play the Hits, but I think that's somebody's actual greatest hits album. Anyhow, I uh, looked it up and there was one called Hitmakers. I thought it was like a funny name for a drummer thing. And it also would allow me to talk to people who weren't just drummers, uh, in a way that the title Learn Drums seemed to be a little bit more limiting. Anyway, they had one episode. I don't know if they even ever published it or if they just like put the name out and said they were going to do something. But as I discovered, uh, being in a band, it's almost impossible to come up with an original name. I did a DJ night with my friend Jeff. We called it Mutant Sounds, which I thought was a great name. And then I Googled it the other day, and I found out somebody else had a blog or radio show called Mutant Sounds. Anyway, enough about me. How are you? Um, this week on the show, we have Krista Keo of Krista Keo Creative Communications, uh, who I ran into at the ECMA's East Coast Music Awards, East Coast Music Week. And um, she told me she was starting a new podcast called Granted about the grant system. And if you are a musician in uh, Canada, certainly Atlantic Canada, this is a big part of what you've got to figure out in order to try to build a career. So I was really interested in talking to her about that. Uh, we get into it a little bit of what she does. She has been a grant writer professionally for quite a while. Um, so I think this is a really interesting episode. Uh, we had a surprise special guest. <laughs> Here we go. Enjoy. Me and Krista Kia. Hello. My name is Krista. I'm from Cornerbrook, Newfoundland. Cornerbrook. I didn't know that. Oh, yes, I am. Mm -hmm. Born, but not very much raised in Cornerbrook. Uh, where were you raised? In Dartmouth. Okay. Nova what, Scotia, before it was cool. What prompted that move? <laughs> well, I was in grade two, so I had to follow my mom at that uh -huh. point, yeah. <laughs> and what, what prompted your mom's move? You know, I think maybe it was part of that what we see now, sort of, you're from a small town, you have ideas for things you want to do, so you move, and so she was from a family of 12, oh my God. and so there were a few of her brothers and sisters already yeah. made the move, yeah. And, but that was fairly common for that, like, my dad was from a family of 10. Right? Seems like for that generation. It's one generation away from us, yeah. you know, and now people are not having kids at all. Yeah, totally. <laughs> More often than I they were. I mean, I am the oldest of six, even oh, in my wow. family. And I am 36, almost 37, cool. and childless. Yes, and I'm 40 and childless as yeah. well. I know, um, I, th I feel like I, sometimes I feel like I'm getting away with something. Right. Something. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, are they going to find me out? Right. No. <laughs> um, okay, so you uh, moved to Dartmouth at age seven? Sure, yeah, 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 I'd yeah. say. And how did you become involved in the music industry? 
Okay. What, like, what's the path that led from hanging out in Dartmouth? Really? Yeah. Okay. So, I think it's unusual. I think everyone has an, an you know, their own way of getting involved uh-huh. in the music and the industry. Or just um, like, was it or what? Like, you know, it. I gotta say, it was not a dream of mine. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was. Uh, not, I would say, I would not describe myself as someone who particularly had a passion, obsession about music growing up at all. I listened to, like, Casey Kasem Top 40. Right. You know, my first record was Thriller. I was pretty straight and narrow that way. But, um, so, and then I, I studied marketing in university, and then I worked in advertising for five years. And so, really what got me into music, and I have to give him credit, because I don't think my life would be... I know it wouldn't be the same, but Ryan Cook. Really? Yeah. How does that happen? So I was working. I was moonlighting from my advertising job, working with a woman who is a casting director in Halifax. There's only two there was at the time. She did a lot of commercial productions and things, and the other woman did film. So I was going out and doing auditions and casting calls with Aaron, who was doing the commercial work and things. And then Ryan was the assistant to the other woman. So there was some story with him where, when he made the transition to start making country music, that's about the time we met, because sometimes when I couldn't work with Aaron, he would. So we ended up like driving around a lot together and just getting to know each other. And then we started dating. And then he just basically introduced me to everyone I know now. Right. That's why I'm here, because we went to shows, we would go out. He took me to a press conference for Music Nova Scotia. I, you know, found out about grant writing. I did one for him. And then I was doing publicity with him and got into the country scene a bit. And that morphed into, like, Americana. There were tons of great women coming up at that time. Christina Martin, Norma MacDonald, Kim Wempe. Like, there was just a great seen at that time. It was uh-huh. so vibrant. And this vibrant. Would be what time period? This was 2007. Mm-hmm. And then I, you know, worked at Music Nova Scotia. I did a one-year contract for a mat leave. Um, and that was in 2009. That would have been, and that would have been where about the time. we met. Exactly. So it's been about 10 years now. Yeah. So yeah, because I was doing a bit more film stuff then, but getting to know people. So yeah, I that's how... That's how I did it. So I don't have a musical family. I have no musical talent that I've discovered yet. Um, but I just love the arts. I love working with creative people. Uh-huh. That's my favorite thing. When I was in the agency world, I would always be hanging out with the writers and the copywriters and the you know, designers and things up on... Because they had the coolest rooms. They had couches and, you know, the whole thing. So I just loved that vibe, making stuff up. Yeah, I find like it's um, it's a pretty tight knit community in that way too. And mm-hmm. it's one thing about like coming to because I even was thinking earlier like you know how many ECMAs have I been to? Like yep. the first time I came to it in Charlottetown was in 2006 when I was living here, and you know it's it's wow, pretty yeah. different. Like my own approach to it now, having been through so many of them, um, is different than it was at that time where I was totally. staying up until 8 a.m. Mm-hmm. and then going sleeping for two hours and going to work at noon yeah and yeah. just partying all night and i guess mm-hmm. they had music all night here too they had the 72 hour jam at that time oh wow and yeah we, yeah it's like hanging out at myron's until right we were talking about that i think that made the guinness book of world records really it's the longest show yes huh. we were trying to look it up there was a guinness book of world records book kicking around in a cafe yeah. here and yeah we were talking about that so that's so funny wow i feel the same way like yeah. this weekend my cousin was in town, who you met last night. And uh, so it's just your priorities are a little different, I find. You know, I want to do real business. I'm investing a lot of money, right? And you, uh-huh. you want to see something come of it. So totally. you can't do that if you're always feeling like garbage and like dragging yourself around. Mm-hmm. Well, and there also was like, I, I, I can only speak for myself, but definitely as a younger person, it was like, all about the no cases for me and like, you know, I the know. official industry stuff is bullshit. Yeah, I love the no cases. Okay, I heard a rumor there were no cases this weekend. There were. I didn't go to a single one. Uh-huh. Okay. That's awesome. I was excited to hear that. Yeah, me too. I love that. Yeah. Um, 
so we are here at the ECMA East Coast uh, Music Awards, East Coast Music Week, or whatever. And we, we got on this topic because you told me last night you are starting a podcast. Yeah. Yeah. I am. It's, uh, it's called Granted. And it's about funding in the arts and talking with artists and music industry professionals to about how funding has affected their journey and their career, really. Because mm-hmm. I think that's a big part of what I have done um, in my business. So I've seen the kinds of ways that either getting funding or not getting funding has affected people and like the process. And just there's a lot of big questions, too, that go into the discussion about funding and, and how it works. So, yeah, I'm hoping to kind of make it more comfortable, more in the open a mm-hmm. little bit, I think. Um, and just so people can relate to one another and, you know, share and those experiences. Yeah, totally. A uh, couple of questions. One, when you say in your business, which for our listeners is what? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, actually, after I finished that year at Music Nova Scotia, um, that's when I started my business. So it's called Chris Dicchio Creative Communications. It's myself. Um, and I've managed artists over the years, and I've done... Grant writing is the most consistent. Um, and I do a lot of marketing. I used to do publicity, and now I really just help artists to choose people on their team to help them do the projects they want to do. So if they're marketing a record, okay, well we'll get a publicist. If it's a radio tracker, okay, great. Do you want a social media person? Okay, great. And then you just all do the planning and sort of the finance bit and then just help, you know, make sure that all kind of unfolds as planned. Mm -hmm. Um, And sometimes I'm involved in project management and sometimes not. So it really just varies. It's been really fun. Mm -hmm. I've got to work on like really fun projects, I think. Do you find working with artists, especially nowadays where uh, artists are you know, like self-managed, self-contained, you kind of mm-hmm. got to do everything to get your thing off the ground and yeah. then you can start um, building a team. Do you find that artists generally, uh, I, I feel like this is not going to come out right, but it's like, do they do a good job on their own? <laughs> do oh, you know what yes. I mean? Yes, I do know what you mean. Like, um, so absolutely. I think I think it's it varies, right? It depends on say how much experience you have, how, how if you have writing skills, um, and if you're interested in developing your writing skills, I think would be one thing, right? Some people just aren't into writing; they don't feel confident in their writing, so it would be more challenging for them. Um, But I really like that because I feel then I have even more of a purpose because I'll work with them to figure out how to get it done. So a lot of times it involves a lot of conversations. And from those conversations, I'll take their words and put it on paper and then ask them more questions to fill in the blanks and then show it to them and say, okay, is this kind of the idea? Yeah. So I think that you see it like, Again, depending on your skill, your experience, um, it varies, but it's really not harder or easier either way. Um, Sometimes if you have a more established artist who has been doing their grant writing, say, for three or four years, they've amassed so much material, and so that transition period can take more time. Um, And also, they might find it hard to let go, but then, you know, eventually it just sort of works out. So, and some artists, I do a grant for them and they take it and they'll run with it and be like, oh, this is how you do it. Okay, great. And they'll do the rest of them for themselves, which is also awesome, right? Because you learn and then you're like, okay, great. Yeah. Go for it. Totally. I found like it is kind of a mysterious thing um, for people coming up, I think, because uh, I was in a band who. We just could, I think we, we did get one fairly early on and like made a thousand CDs, three or four hundred of which, which I still have. But, um, 
you know, it's hard to figure out. I, but I think also, like in the case of our band, it was everything was done at the last minute and it's done in a s- spirit of like, okay, what do you want to hear so that I can get some money? And then you get rejected and that process can take weeks or months. And then, you know, initially it's frustrating. Like, why did I, you know, what's wrong? Why, why are all these people yeah. getting and stuff and, and not us? And then you look at your mm-hmm. application, you're like, oh, obviously this didn't get funded. Like, mm-hmm. it makes complete sense to me now after the fact because okay. I sound like I don't know what I'm talking about. Okay. Um, but I did find, you know, it's a process of, like, over the course of probably three or four years, we would just get rejected round after round. And, but eventually, once you kind of learn to hit it, then, and, and then also maybe once your band gained some momentum and people want to help you, like, not shoot yourself in the foot, um... Then, for us, it did kind of flip, um, and then for a couple of years, we were getting stuff approved every round. Sure, yeah. Do you find that there's an art to it, or there's, like, to me, there's, I don't know, it's, like, people tell you how to do it, but I also personally found, like, working on juries uh, was really illuminating for it because you understand how these things are scored, and, like, even just the um, the the idea like so many people people tend to submit things and hope that people will look past whatever the limitations are of the application or like no we didn't do this and I know you're supposed to but look at this and isn't this really great and then when you're on the other side and you're scoring it you're like well these are my criteria this is what you gave me this is right. like sorry it's i can't give you better than a seven out of ten but you didn't do the other three mm-hmm. okay yeah i mean yeah i i so i do what i ha- the way i try to approach it is that i do tell people who i work with you know i can't guarantee that your grant will be improved there's no way i can um, kind of like when you're a publicist, you can't guarantee that a journalist is going to write about you, sure. right? Because you can provide them with all the information and do your best job possible, but it's their decision. So same like a jury. So what I try to do is I try to, well, first of all, when I think about new projects that I'm taking on, a lot of times I'm thinking about it almost from the perspective of the program looking at the project and if it's a good fit. Like, uh, for example, say you've got a, a recording and uh, um, that recording is also part of a theater show, okay? So then you go, in my mind, I think, oh my gosh, that's a great fit for creative industries because that's what they love to invest in, this multidiscipline kind of arts funding. There's not a lot of limitations, so there's room like to move with this creative idea kind of thing. So that's what, like you said, like I do, so that's one thing. You want to make sure that it's a really good fit for the program and think of it from the actual funder's perspective. Like, is this a project that this organization based on what they're mandated to do, why they run these programs, that they would want to invest in this. And then if you can get to that point, then you go, okay, great, this is a good fit. Yes, we meet the eligibility. Okay, great. And then I'll reach out to the program officer and have a conversation and say, okay, I'm, look, you know, we're thinking of applying to this program. What do you think? And they'll initially ask you a bunch of questions to make sure it fits and that you're eligible. And then you ask them, you know, anything you have doubts about, like, okay, well, we've got all this going on, but this is one thing we don't. What do you think? Is that going to hurt us? And so you're really just like upfront about it and try to vet it as much as you possibly can before you actually submit. And sometimes program officers will even read your submission so you can have it 100% ready to go yeah. and then send it to them and say can you please you know take the time you'll want to do it like a month out from when you want to get it like the deadline you know to give them time if, if you can make it work but that also helps so I think it's just trying to eliminate all the reasons why you wouldn't be funded um, just, just try to minimize those as much as possible right like right. You just kind of think about it and then um and then I when I when I write a grant I find it is really creative cuz I like looking at it like telling a story mm-hmm. and I try to make it sound exciting and fun and awesome and like you said you put your best foot forward but I like to make the readability of it as if someone's really engaged 
because I know myself, if you've got a eight to 10 page document, you might lose someone. Uh -huh. So I try to like break it up, make it easy to read and then just make it like so that when they're done reading, they're like, wow, this is so cool. I'm excited. I can get behind this. So when they get in the jury, they're like ready to go pitch for you. Totally. They're ready to vouch for you. Right. And they can get and think this is cool. I like this. This is why. So that's really what, how I like to set it up. Um, and then you're right. Once you, a lot of times once artists get funded, you then get investment for the reciprocal things. Like you got money for the record. Okay, now for touring. Okay, great. For more marketing. So, you know, programs generally like to run that way. So that that is ha part of how that happens. And then I think you're right. You tr reach a breaking point where you're like, oh, this, I got to prove this is how we do it. Yeah, yeah. well... That's it, it's interesting. Even like a, a few things that you'd mentioned. Number one being like running everything by the program officer before you even write the thing up, which was not something like we always would write the whole thing and then call or email Mickey and try desperately to get in there before oh, yeah. the deadline oh, yeah, came yeah. up. Can you meet with me? Yeah, yeah. exactly. And yeah. even the like matching it to the organization, we were never really clear on what any of them did. Mm -hmm. um, and but number mm -hmm. especially the, the the readability thing I think is so mm -hmm. important because I think also like there's a psychological effect on the person reading it. Yes. Like if you like you say if if you read it and it's a drag, then you will start to develop some kind of a grudge against the band. Like I found that even as a you know a factor juror or whatever, if the the applica if the application is annoying to deal with, like you are more likely to develop some kind of bias against the music. Yeah, you get in a negative mood, kind yeah, of, right? Totally. And then you start going, okay, it kind of tips you off, like something sort of tips you off, and then you're like, wait a minute, how legit is this? And then yep. you start trying to look for the reasons why not, uh -huh. I think, or like they just stand out to you more. Yep. So yeah, I like to make it easy to read, clear, just nice, and, um, and uh, but, but it's funny because really recently I'd say in the last year or two like you were saying about like being on the factor jury yeah. like the artist development grants and the comprehensive artist grants and they're like it's like a marketing package it looks like a PowerPoint presentation with full on graphics and like you know um, full bleed photos it's really like I mean I, don't, I have very mixed feelings about that right I just I don't know I, f I find I don't know what to think um <sighs> what do you think? Uh, I think, well, the f the flip side of the, like, band who doesn't know how to put it together and is obviously bluffing is the band that is very good at putting together and is not so obviously bluffing. Like, I've caught myself um, giving high marks to people who, like, have a really slick-looking package. And because you're just so overwhelmed, you're like, I've got 15 things to get through yeah. this week. I'm doing it in my spare time. Yeah. I have found there have been some of them that I look close, you know, you look closer and like this list of radio stations we're going to send it to that's a page long. It's just, we're thinking about yes. so, you know, yeah. Like yeah. the list of publications and you see all these logos that you recognize and you're like, oh, that looks good. And then yeah. like, we would like to submit to. Yeah, these. yeah, exactly. And you're like, wait a minute. Exactly. So you're right in saying that like the look of it does influence, I think, how you just process the information and the, the readability. And so those mm -hmm. are some things I think that are simple things that artists can do to, um, you know, just polish it up or just make a, a good impression and things. Um, and, and also getting anyone who likes to read to read your grant to is also a good idea. Like if you have a friend who loves books, then ask them if you can send it to them because they'll probably be good at editing and they'll tell you. Right. Like, this sounds good or not. Or Right, or like what's awkward or what's yeah. not convincing or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, because that's kind of another funny thing about it. Like I used to um, write these things up and I almost wouldn't want anybody to read it. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. I know, and see, that's the feeling I'm trying to... That's what it is, right? Because I used to be like that too, but now... I gotta say, there's been some things that I've written that I've, I've almost wa as soon as I write it and put it away, I'm like, I kind of want to read that again, actually, because it makes me feel excited. Like, wow, that's kind of cool that this is happening for this person, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. 
I know. I have like I have also discovered artists through that, and like you yes. know, because you you see the ones who come through. There, there's like the ones who are just ready to go, and there's absolutely no reason you wouldn't just greenlight their project. And then there's the ones that have some stuff they got to figure out, and if they like, depending on the competition, they might get through. And then there's the ones that are like kind of clueless and then there's the ones that are, that are totally clueless I agree yeah I totally agree and I, I do I have found some really good bands and then it's fun because they kind of come up again on your radar mm-hmm. when that project's actually happening right and then you see them like playing in your city and it's like oh wow I, I, I heard that record like a year ago yeah totally oh wow ambulance is uh, we're at we're in a park we're sitting on a swing set in fact yeah um so, but yeah, yeah it's exciting to watch them grow. It is. It's really fun. And I love listening to that early music, too, because, like, one of my favorite bands ever is uh, Sleepless Nights. <laughs> and I laugh just because they're not a band anymore. So, And then sometimes when I reference them, people don't know. But, like, we, you know, being in Halifax and also yeah. the East Coast and things, like... Oh, I remember, like, the year that I lived in Charlottetown was the, the Sleepless Nights were getting started. I used to work at the Guild over here, and I remember yeah. they're coming through. My God, and it was there, like, um, one of the lyrics in one of their songs is, uh, it was a $100 weekend. Right. Right? And it's so funny, because that's such yeah. a, a youthful feeling, right? To be like, wow, what a big weekend, 100 bucks. But their whole band, that, to me, that energy, that newness, the, like funness of it that's what i loved about their band so when i see that come up i'm just like this this is fun yeah yeah (laughs) it's a microphone do you want to say hello hello what's your name violet you can say thanks for listening to hit makers i don't know that would be super good (laughs) that would be good i mean we could include it in the in our recording then can you say okay thank you for listening to hit makers yeah, we can't put it on the ground. And it's not yours. It belongs to me now. Well, Whoa. we're going to go, I'm actually. I'm being robbed here. Yeah. Your parents must be somewhere, right? But yeah, I think, so uh, I think that's uh, really cool and will oh, be thanks. really valuable for people. So it's called Granted, did you say? Yeah, uh-huh. it is. And uh, John Mullane from mm-hmm. In Flight Safety and also, you know, producer extraordinaire, is going to co-produce it with me. So it's going to be in his studio. And uh, he lent me a bunch of equipment. Fun. Which I've had for a few months because, like you and I were talking before, it's hard to get over the sound of your voice. Yes. So I did some, like, I just read some stuff yeah. over and over and tried to fix oh, my that's good. nasal neatness. Uh, I'm probably not consciously trying it now, but... Anyway, uh, yeah. When I mixed early awesome. episodes of this show, I would like I, I played some for uh, Jane, and she's like, "Why is your voice so much quieter than the other person's?" Oh, really? Because <laughs> <Yeah, 'cause laughs> I just didn't like it. Because you turned it down. Yeah, I turned it down. <laughs> I was like, nobody wants to hear that. Well, that's good that she said that. Yeah, no, I know it did take a bit of practice, but um, John's got some really nice stuff in his studio, so uh-huh. he's just been so patient and thoughtful and um gosh i wouldn't be able to do it without him so i can't wait yeah we're gonna put out our first episode in june that cool. is the goal yeah so we'll see you in a month or so all right thank yeah. you thank you thank you for having me on oh of course my pleasure thanks for doing it awesome okay yeah. cool see ya all right bye bye All right, big thanks to Krista for being here. I was going to edit that uh, last part out, and then I thought of that um, video that the Town Heroes made a few weeks ago about the Maritimers who, like, take forever to hang up the phone. And I thought it would be funny to leave it in. (laughs) Um, Cool. Important stuff to know. I appreciated her perspective And I hope that I um, was able to bring the point of view of the frustrated band person um, having been on both sides of it a little bit to the table. So uh, to learn more about Krista, you can go to her website, KristaKeogh.com, K-R-I-S-T-A-K-E-O-U-G-H. Uh, if you're unsure of the spelling, you're probably listening to this on your phone. You can just look at your phone. 
Um, my stuff is at learndrums.ca. I streamlined my website in the last week. Uh, if you're a regular listener, you know that I've been having a little bit of an existential crisis. And it just was getting to be a little bit too much to maintain for me. I'd like to uh, free up some time to focus on other things. So uh, show notes are kaput if you are a fan of the show notes. Um, for now, there's not going to be any more. Uh, but you can find all of the past episodes and uh, little blurbs about everybody at learndrums.ca as well as how to get a hold of me. And that's it. I also uh, deleted a bunch of stuff off the Learn Drums Instagram, so now it just has the uh, my little instructional video. Okay, that's all. Thanks for listening. Bye-bye. <laughs>